If you have your Bibles, turn it to me to Nehemiah chapter 1. Nehemiah chapter 1. I said I was going to do a three part series. Uh, the first one was on evangelism. Of course, that's the following Sunday, and then we had Easter last week. So, this is the second part. And this is going to be dealing with prayer. I know I talk a lot about prayer, but it is a subject that needs to be addressed from time to time. It is a subject that we definitely need to pray about. It is a subject that needs to be put into practice and learned. So Nehemiah chapter 1, starting at verse 4. You probably don't hear much of any sermons on Nehemiah except the building of the wall. But this prayer that uh, Nehemiah prayed is worth looking at. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Nehemiah chapter 1, starting at verse 4. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. And said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. Let, not, let thy ear now be attentive and thy eyes open, that I may hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, for the children of Israel thy servants, and confess the sins of the children of Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Both I and my father's house have sinned. We have dealt very corruptly against thee, and have not kept thy commandments, nor thy statutes, nor the judgments, which thou commanded thy servant Moses. Let us pray. Now, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are on the throne, that your ears are open to our requests. Lord, let us pray that you bless this portion of the service, that you have your way here, that uh, you find the powers of the enemy that would want to disrupt our minds in the Receive of what's here, that you move mildly in this portion of the scene. May we take and heed the instruction that is here. And bless our pray in Christ's name. Amen. I don't have to tell you that this country is in trouble. We've had a lot of trouble episodes in this country's history. But we are definitely in trouble now. And with that in mind, we definitely need, as the people of God, to pray, and to pray often. Neither political party has the answers. Neither political party is worth a whole lot, in my estimation. Much of the church world is in trouble. Pharisees, one man, apostasy is prevalent. Was talking to one of the local pastors. He and I and a few other pastors are going to get together to pray. Don Gulch would be one of them. Richard Delata plan on being there. Uh, Harold Myers, well, plan plus some others we plan on praying as pastors. This one particular pastor is holding the meeting. Scott Buddy told me that he's one of the pastors' groups. And what he's seeing is pastors that are wrapped up in social justice, wokeism, left-wing type stuff, or they're uh, all love, 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 and not a whole lot about the holiness and righteousness of God. Well, I've been running to that too. And a lot of churches are anemic. And so there's a lot in the church world to pray about. We see here that Nehemiah prays. As I said, there's a lot in this prayer that we can learn from. Nehemiah was, by this time, living in what is now 
Iran. It was part of uh, the Babylonian exile. An exile that was prophesied by the Old Testament prophets and took place during the times of Jeremiah. It was a 70 year exile in which much of Judah was exiled into the Babylonian area. And then later on, Persia took over that portion of the world. And so Nehemiah and the Jews were living under the Persian Empire. We see that Nehemiah was a cupbearer for the Persian king. That is, he was involved with giving the king the wine to the many banquets that the king would have. He just received a report from one of his brothers about Jerusalem, that Jerusalem, for the most part, was still in ruins, but the wall that surrounded it was still broken down, that the city, the holy city of God, was defenseless, and, that, and the people were in not so great shape, and this grieved Nehemiah intensely when he prayed. So let's take a look at that. The first thing we need to know is that we need, or wherever we look, we need to pray. Jeremiah, I mean, Nehemiah was praying. We see that he wept, that he mourned, that he fasted, and that he prayed. This was intense prayer. And folks, I want to tell you that the Church of Jesus Christ as much as ever before needs intense prayer from, from those that are part of that church. We need from time to time to engage in some intense prayer. We need to retreat. We don't have to wait till we go to Steve Winfield's retreat. We need that time to retreat and pray intensely about those matters that are great concern to us. Matters regarding this country matters regarding other things. We need to mourn for our sins. I'm going to talk more about that later. We need to be weeping. Maybe if we can't weep physically, weep inwardly. Weep inwardly for some of the situations that are of great concern to us. And definitely pray. Our praying needs to be concentrated. It needs to be concerned about families. There was a situation that took place recently. I'm not going to go into the situation, but it grieved Edie and I. We didn't know it was coming, but it happened. No sign of the times, but it's not a good sign. There are friends that we need to be praying for. Neighbors that we need to be praying for. We need to be praying for this church in Christ as Matthias earlier. We need to be praying for this church. We need to be praying for the salvation for those that are lost that we know about. One of the people that uh, we've been praying for regarding cancer. I don't know if that man is saved. I hope so. I'm praying that he'll come to know Christ before he checks out. We need to spend much time in prayer. There is much to pray for. I don't know about you, but I, I can think of a lot of things that I can, be, can pray for and do pray for. Let me encourage you. Do as 1 Timothy chapter 2 reminds us to do. Turn to me to 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy chapter 2. The Apostle Paul is writing to his young disciple Timothy. Timothy chapter 2 verse 1 
I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. The term supplications means specific prayers. And we just recently prayed specific prayers for folks that we know about and don't know about. But there are prayers that need to be prayed. We pray general prayers. We engage in intercessory prayer. Intercessory prayer is prayer on behalf of somebody. And of course, we need to give thanks as well. Thank the Lord for the prayers that have been answered. Thank the Lord for what he's going to do in response to the prayers that we are giving him. Let me encourage you, if you can, to fast every now and then in combination with your prayers. Maybe one meal, two meals, whole day. Maybe you can't fast physically as far as, as, far as refraining from food, but maybe, but maybe you can fast from the television for a while from social media or for some other hobby that you like to play. Engage in. Fast and play instead. It, it won't hurt us to humble ourselves and beseech God to hear and answer our prayers. Beseech means to beg. The psalmist begged God numerous times to hear him and to answer his prayers. And there are times that we need to do that. Thinking about fasting. I'm not saying this to boast, but I've been doing some fasting lately. And man, have some prayers been answered. It's unreal. Some of the prayers that God will answer when I fast as well as pray. Don't let anybody tell you fasting and prayer is not honored by God. God honors it. Believe me, I know. The second point is we need we learn in this Nehemiah's prayer who to pray to. The God of heaven, the Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them that love him and observe his commandments. The Lord the self-existing God who is totally sufficient that depends on no one for anything. The eternal God who is from everlasting to everlasting. The almighty God, the one that has all power and none can restrain him. The God of his people, the church of Jesus Christ. The ruler over all the God of heaven. The great and terrible God. The word terrible means all inspired. God is a great and all inspiring God. Psalm 47 1. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. He's a God that keeps covenant. That is a binding agreement between two parties. And he keeps mercy. Verse 5 6 states who he keeps mercy for. Those that love him and observe his commandments. And who are those people? The born again, blood washed children of God. God keeps his side of the covenant. He had a covenant called the Old Testament with Israel. And though Israel broke the covenant off the whole time, Parker, God kept his end of it. He told him, if you obey me, I will bless you. But if you disobey me, I will curse you. And sure enough, the fruit of the cursing was this exile that Nehemiah was in. But God said, after 70 years, I was going to bring my, he said he was going to bring his people back to Jerusalem. And sure enough, he did. And Nehemiah brought some people back with him to help build the wall. And of course, we have the New Testament. New Testament between God and his people today, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, which includes thus, those of us that are here today and those that know God that are watching this on video, whenever you do. We see that God 
loves us. He loves us with a great love. It's an everlasting love. It's greater than a mother's love. Now, you know a mother's love is great. A mother will do just about anything for her children. A mother will go, will go miles for her children. And yet God's love is greater than that. God's love is a sacrificial love. That love was, that love was manifested when God sent his only begotten son Jesus to earth to become man and later on to die on the cross for our sins. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son to see whosoever should believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God loves us greatly and he's merciful to us every day, always in temporal things as well as the things of the Holy Spirit. God's word says in Ephesians 1, 3, that God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in Christ Jesus. Second Peter chapter 1 talks about that we have retained what we need for eternal life and godliness. God has given what we need so that we can walk with him, talk with him, live for him, be children of God. With that in mind, we need to love and obey God. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. And then in John 14, 23, he says, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And my Father and I will make a bold in you. And my friends, part of the prayers, so that point is, Part of the prayers that we need to pray is confession of sins. We see that in verses 6 and 7. We need to confess our sins. 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. If we confess our sins, he that is God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's times we need to confess our sins. Be they Sins that seem small or sins that seem great. We need to seek God for salvation for souls. And maybe if somebody's watching this video, you don't know Jesus is your Lord and Savior. You never have been saved. If you die right now, you go to hell. I'm going to be encouraging to turn to God. The scripture says in Isaiah, seek the Lord while he may be found. Now's the time to turn to God. Today you can hear his voice, harden not your heart in the day of provocation. You hear the voice of God in this message. Turn to Jesus. <laughs> Let us pray for restoration in the church. Jesus told the church in Ephesians, according to Revelation chapter 2, verse 4, I have someone against you. You have left your first love. That's God to re renew you, revive you, restore unto you the joy of your salvation that David prayed in Psalm 51. Pray for revival. Revival among individuals like us. Revival in this church. Revival in other churches. Revival in this area. It would be great if we had a revival across this country. God's people need to pray. Our prayers need to be persistent. We need to persistently pray and persistently pray for the things that I've been talking about. And persistently pray for those needs that we know about. Pray for our states, whether it be West Virginia or Virginia, or those of you who see this online, whatever state you happen to be. Let me encourage you to pray for your leaders. Pray for salvations. Pray for renewal and revival in local churches in your state. 
be it Virginia, West Virginia, or wherever state you who watch this in the video. Or if you're in another country, pray for God to move in your country, wherever that country that may be. I know there are people that have watched these videos that live in Africa. There's a pastor in Tanzania that's been watching my videos. So these videos are going to other countries. May God move in those countries as well. Let's put into practice what I've been talking about today. Let us put into practice what Nehemiah put in practice as recorded in these verses right here. Let's be persistent in our prayers. You know the story Jesus told of the little woman before the unjust judge, how she wanted the judge to avenge her of her enemies. The judge, scripture says, didn't fear God a man, but he said, I'm going to give this woman what she wants because otherwise she'd be worried me continuously. That's the way we need to be in prayer. Pray, pray continuously. Only difference is we're not going to be worried and die like the little woman would have done with that judge. God wants us to keep coming to him time and time again. And let us do so. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for your word. Let the Holy Spirit do its work in our lives. Let the Holy Spirit do its work in the lives of those that will see this on video and those that are here. Let us be blessed in Christ's name. Amen.